What's up, YouTubes? We are back. Corey here, BPB Restorations. We are back with our 64 Impala vlog. It's been a few weeks since we've been on here and posted anything, but um, we're back and we've got the passenger side all finished up, all the the uh, gaps and the panel alignment and all that stuff. It's all everything looks sweet. These gaps are flawless. Uh, I think you guys are gonna like what you see. Um, so today what we're gonna focus on is primer and guide coat and how I go about doing it, my process. And of course you guys probably know on these 64 Impalas, the quarter panels are massively huge, um, long, ridiculous. So they take a long time to get them straight. And that's what's been so long since I've posted is just that. Um, I've been working these quarters and stuff for a long time. And I know people are like, oh, you put brand new quarters on. Why are you body working those quarters? That don't make any sense. Well, if you want to just go ahead and throw the quarter on and paint it on yours, go right ahead. But I can guarantee you them panel gaps won't be 100% perfect. So just take your time. Um, you guys can do this stuff too. I'm nobody special. Um, you know, if you guys got any questions, comments, drop them down below. I'll try to help. But this video today, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll show you what kind of primer we use. A real nice four to one U pole primer. It's real good, um, thick. You can kind of thin it out a little bit to help it spray a little bit easier, but it goes on real nice. Um, dries really quick. Uh, Sands like powder, blocks out nice. and So yeah, we're gonna go on into that primer and then uh, show you how we guide coat to make sure your panels are perfectly 100% straight every time. So uh, without you know further ado, let's go ahead and go check out the car and we'll get into um, the, uh, you know, get into the rest of it, get into the rest of the video. So here we go. All right, guys, so here we go. You guys seen the last video. We did the driver's side. We flushed everything up, did all of our gaps, and, um, you know, got it all sanded and prepped and ready. So you guys can check out our gaps. Everything looks slick. Um, quarter panel looks slick. No problems there. Um, the other side which took me a little bit longer than this side here but it's all done now it turned out really really nice nice and straight you look down it all the way down that sucker nice and straight but for today we're going to go ahead and get this sucker primed i am excited it's been a long time We've been, uh, I was quarantined for about 10 days, so didn't really get to do much out here. Couldn't get materials and parts and paints and stuff like that. So slowed me down a little bit, but we're back at it now. Um, ready to go, raring to go. Nice and straight, guys. So what we're going to do is, um, we've already, you know, plastic everything up, masked everything up. I had my... Helper Lucian helped me out, and um, he is the man. I'm going to have him come in here and finish up a few things here in just a minute. But for now, um, you know, I've already cleaned it, you know, sprayed it off, cleaned my area. We're already ready to go. So our primer, what we use is uh, U-Pole, U-P-O-L, good stuff. I'll show you guys that. <clears throat> Four to one. I love this stuff. I use it uh, ever since I found it and, you know, started using it. I haven't switched. I swear it's it's the best. Um, it's two in one. It's, it's a surfacer and a filler. So it's, you know, basically it's like a, a liquid bondo, for lack of better words. Um, so you mix it up and you can spray it thick and spray it on and then block it out real nice. It's just like an extra coat of filler over the whole thing. And it blocks really nice. And the other way is a surfacer, so when you're all done, you can 
you know, and you get all your body work done and completely finished, you can go right back over this car or whatever you're working on with this stuff here and uh, thin it down a little bit and spray it out and it sprays out real nice, a little bit less peely and then you can go right on into your base coat after that. Just like a, you know, just like a regular sealer. So I've been doing it that way for years and no issues. It's, it's, you know, it works great. It saves from having to buy a bunch of extra stuff. And, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. It's four to one. We'll throw it in our cup and uh, get this stuff hooked up. I'm ready to get this thing primed. All right, guys, we're gonna run this primer up to our four here. Or our, we'll probably, we're gonna need a, quite a bit. So we'll run it up to the six on the four to one. So it'll be six parts. Four parts primer, one part um, activator or hardener, whatever you want to call it. And then it'll be 10% reducer. And that's just going to help me flow this out and uh, give me a little bit of time because it's a whole car. So it uh, definitely helps. This stuff, like I said, it's really thick without that reducer, so. Now I'll go ahead and do, if you guys can see what I did there, the four to one. I hope you can understand that. Took the primer up to this six, took the activator to here, and now 10% reducer, just like the can says we can add, will be this line here. So we'll take our reducer actually up to that black line there. So that's how it's done, guys. If you got any questions, drop them down below. We're going to get this stuff mixed up and get to spraying. All right, guys, our primer is about dry. We got a couple of boom booms in it. I want to show you guys real quick before we get started. This is what you don't want to do, okay? That's a big old run. <laughs> it looks awful. Lucian said he would never do that bad of a job. That's what he said. <laughs> that's terrible. Don't do that. But anyway, um, for our guide coat, that stuff will all sand out. No, I, don't, I ain't worried about that at all. This is... You know, we primed it. This is all going to have to be guide coated, sanded again, then primed again. So, um, no big deal at all. On the other side, we had another little boo boo. I, my gun was kind of messing up a little bit, so I put my finger over the tip and kind of tipped it, and it shot a little splude right there on there on the side. But, uh, no big deal. Like I said, all that stuff is sand out. Just leave it there. Don't try to mess with it. Go right back over it here in a little bit with some 220 and a block when it's dry. But for now, guide coat. I just used a cheap can of Rust-Oleum and uh, go right on over it real lightly. I'm not painting anything. Oh, oh look, yeah, a good one. <laughs> I just said that's good. All right. Cut. All right, we're back. We got a can, an actual <laughs> can that's working now. So just guide it. I mean, just put it on there. You're not painting the whole thing. This now this primer is most of the way dry. Probably you know three quarters of the way or more. It don't have to be 100. percent This stuff will just set right on top, and then it'll fill in. All of your low spots, okay? Everything. So anywhere you messed up, after we start sanding this, 
it's going to show it 100%. And that's what you want because when you go to lay on your paint, you do not want any mess ups, anything left behind. And this will show it all. So. Um, I'll just keep going over the whole thing like this. As you guys can see, not a lot. Don't take the whole can, you know, just a guy coat. Now, if I was on my final prime and, uh, you know, finishing up, getting ready to paint, I would not be using this cheap uh, guide coat. This, you know, this, this stuff right here will sand off real easy, but I wouldn't want to go right into my base coat or, you know, anything like that over the top of this. So it's okay to do it here because we're going to be sanding all this off then repriming, okay? So no, no big deal here. Some people will say you shouldn't use this stuff, but I've never had an issue with it doing it like this. And they do have special guide coat in a can for this, you know, purpose. And they've got dry guide coats and other kinds also, but um, this works just fine at this stage. All right, guys, primer is dry, guide coat's dry. We went ahead and started blocking on it a little bit so you guys can kind of get the effect um, of the guide coat, how it works, how important it is. Um, you guys can see how, you know, we thought my body work looked straight. You know, everything looked perfect down the sides, you know, top, everything. But you can see now from my sanding just lightly that I had some high spots and that's what you're seeing here this is where my filler was underneath okay and now my primer is gone so oh. same thing here here you're seeing filler um, here filler here's just a tiny little on a raised spot um, it's, it's blocked out now. It's all nice and smooth, so another coat of primer will cover mm -hmm. that. Um, here you guys can see burnt through. Now, all this stuff here, I didn't do any body work back here. So what you're seeing here is exactly how important guide coat is. I didn't do any body work at all back here, but this panel from the factory, you know, I got it from the factory, put it right on here, and you can see there's low spots in it there you know all over now if you if you just go ahead and prime it sand it with a da and shoot it you're going to see especially especially on these 64s with these large quarters or anything with large quarters you'll see every single small you can't hardly feel this thing at all but it, it's there and if you guys you know just buzz over that it, the low spots still going to be there so that's why it's so important you know for blocking at this step here and at this stage now for blocking i use obviously you know several different sizes of block but this big one here for um you know for these large quarters especially or big areas that i'm doing but um you know this one here is pretty big you can get these dura blocks you can pick them up for like eight to ten bucks so Great blocks, they do the job. I've got smaller ones just like it. And then another trick of the trade that I like is a paint stick. It's perfectly flat, straight, makes a great block for hard to get areas like down in these curves here. All down in there, you can take that smaller block just like this. You know, back and forth, up and down. Well, it's harder to get your big blocks in there. So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around. Keep blocking till all this pretty much, you know, everything's blocked out. All the guide coat's gone or the primer's burned away. I don't know. But we're, uh, 
you know, we're obviously going to have to prime it all again. No big deal there. That's what this step's for. This is why it's important. All this stuff will show. Here's some more spots. You know, I did a little bit of body work over here, but you guys can see it's, you know, slightly low. Anywhere that your black paint is still stuck in your low spots, it's low there. So you either got to keep blocking or get filler out, which we don't need filler. We're not, we don't need any of that. Everything pretty much on this is straight enough that we're going to be able to finish blocking it all out. No more filler work. No, you know, obviously we got to prime it again. No big deal to cover up all of our spots again, but pretty much there, pretty much where we need to be other than the very, very small, you know, like I said, imperfections, these are just a tiny low spot, but if you was to go ahead and, you know, sand the black off of there and leave the low spot and just, or scotch bright it and go right into your paint, you'll see every single tiny little bitty imperfection in this thing. So that's what we're doing. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, anything we've done, anything we've used, um, you know, drop the questions down below. We love to answer them. If you got some hate, we like hate too. Drop that down below. Um, whatever it takes, you know, it all makes the world go round. I'm pretty much going to finish this video up. I don't think you guys want to see me blocking too much. Um, it's real boring. Just lay your block flat, side to side, back and forth, up and down. You know, what you're going for here is panel flushness. You want, when you lay your block on there, you want that sucker to be perfectly flush all the way down, you know. And that goes to both sides, all the doors, the, you know, the quarter panels, all your gaps. You want all this stuff flush. So, you know, back and forth, side to side till you achieve that with these sweet blocks. Now for sandpaper, I guess one thing I didn't mention is, um, you know, once I get past my bodywork stage, obviously I'm past that, I'm into primer and now I'm taking it back off. I change my grits, go get up away from the, you know, the harder grits that are gonna eat your stuff off and go with something like a 180 or a 220, you know, for your primer sanding. And after this, then I'll buzz it all with like a 320 um, with the DA real quick just to kind of get rid of some of these 180 and 220 scratches in this and then we'll be ready for our next coat of primer and then we'll wet sand that coat of primer you know before we paint and make sure it's perfectly flawless so a few little tips and tricks for you guys some things I've picked up along the way um, what works for me and how my stuff always comes out perfectly straight it doesn't leave here unless it's straight you know, we strive for excellence here and, you know, we, we do fuck up. It, it happens. We mess up a lot and, you know, can't help that. It's, it, it just happens. It's part of it. You just got to learn to, you know, maneuver around those mistakes. So, like I said, you guys got any comments, questions, concerns, drop them down below. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.